In the name of the Father, Son, Holy Ghost, Amen. Jesus, Mary, St. Joseph, and St. Teresa, pray for us. And happy St. Colbin, Colby, I forget how to say his name, Maximilian, let me look here. St. Colby, Mary, Maximilian, Feast Day. Yeah, wonderful saint. But anyway, is that church in Coeur d'Alene, Idaho, the Pope Pius X, which isn't a Pope Pius X, I know that it's, a, a Novus Ordo Church, a diocesan, but has the name Saint Pope Pius X. I know it's confusing. I was confused at first with that too. I thought it was an SSPX, but it's not. It's actually a hippie church with um, all the people of, you know, the rich people with their uh, rich purses. I forget the name of that too. Um, Versace purchase or whatever. I can't remember the name of those things, but and their dye jobs and boob jobs and stuff. But they come from that same clique of rich people that's over at the uh, St. Thomas, the Apostle Catholic Church. They like, you know, go back and forth. But anyway, this church is is a little weird. And they really emphasize socializing, which is a huge problem in the church. Even in the traditional church is just a huge, huge issue. Uh, but also, I think the priest is gay, and I kind of had that sense he was, and I just always kind of feel like he might be gay, especially since, you know, when I went to school at Gonzaga, you know, there's all these kind of questionable characters in the seminary, and one of the gay, you know, because of the music department, and <laughs> unfortunately, you know, the the stigma is true. I mean, musicians and actors, they always say, you know, well, they're kind of fruity. Well, anyway, uh, one of these fruity teachers that I had, you know, when I went to do to play mass as a violinist at, uh, you know, Jesuit house, he was pointing out all these gay seminarians because I guess they're standing close to each other. And he's, he was like coupling them off. And he's like counted like nine couples of gay seminarians. And then after the the mass and I can't even remember what the mass was for they asked me if I want to drink with them and I'm like 19 but I go have dinner and it was like the loudest dinner I have ever been to they were so loud they were drinking and you know it's no wonder that things have gone downhill then Father Spitzer lost you know, the Jesuit chain of command through the presidency of Gonzaga. I know Father Chris, he's, he likes to praise Father Spitzer, but I'm sorry when you can't keep the Jesuits as a president of your own university and give it up to atheist psychologists. That's a huge, huge problem. And they're always really too anxious to let that Gonzaga basketball team take make a lot of money. For them, in kind of a bad way, that corrupted the school. But the school was already corrupted, believe me. <laughs> I got there, and I really think it should have stayed, remained in all boys' school. I don't really believe women and men should mix together when it comes to education because there's just way too many temptations and people fall into. And it's just not pure, chaste, and holy, and that's the bottom line. And so God allowed all this to happen to my alma mater, my you know, Gonzaga, and then we can see this going on now in the professional field of uh, these priests that act and appear, you know, effeminate and gay uh, at the churches in Coeur d'Alene. And they're also spread out. I mean, they're in Montana, Spokane, you know, all these, what would you would assume or think to be quite conservative. <laughs> 